two special guests with us this afternoon, all the way from the Philippines, Bishop Pasquale and Bishop Eong, um, who are both bishops in the United Church of Christ in the Philippines, and they're in Canada uh, checking out um, several places. Um, they were at General Council Executive for a day, uh, watching how we do our business and our ministry, and they're in Winnipeg uh, primarily to attend the uh, conference of uh, River Running this weekend. And so we uh, are very pleased that they're with us this afternoon, and we're just going to ask them to comment on a few things um, um, while they're with us. We've heard comments that it's risky being a Christian in the Philippines, and could you comment on that for us? We are put into the dilemma of, you know, being enemy of the state. And that actually is the government doing to us. Even those who were, you know, our co-ministers who were killed, we are yet harassed by this, by the institution that supposed to protect us, mm -hmm. serving the people. And it's very hard for us. And we would treasure very much your being, you know, compassionate also, understanding, and journeying with us. And journeying with us. That it's also part of our responsibility to tell you what's happening to us because you know even what the things that we are you know suffering accused of are actually part of the global you know problem that we are encountering where our country actually is supported by big corporations that the Philippines is actually, you know, open for foreign investment. That our natural resources are exploited. The developmental aggression was so very strong and huge developmental aggression. And that we need to protect our people. Looking at it from the point of view of solidarity and partnership is much more inspiring and life enhancing. And so this is one reason why we are here. We have even the, the pride to tell you about our, our suffering and bad faith because you are part of the whole family. We would not be speaking about this uh, with people whom we do not trust, but because we also trust you and within the household of God. So even the darkest part of our experiences are open book to you. And another issue is much bleaker than what is what was experienced by so many. But this uh, issue on extrajudicial killings and uh, human rights violations, specifically against our workers and lay leaders, is really very condemnable because it's systematic it's not isolated cases it's not unintentional it is programmatic being perpetrated by by the government's instrumentality particularly the police and military we have the uh, we have the courage to, to tell this because we have some witnesses, living witnesses, from among these victims who can personally testify that it was both the police people and uh, the military who were principally the actors in implementing abduction or even killing. But if you would ask me, why is it that uh, they are not there are no cases uh, solved in court. Actually, 99% of not less than 1,000 cases of extrajudicial killings uh, remain to be unsolved at to, up to this time. And even our 32 or 23 specifically, these are unsolved 
cases. So families of these victims, the church or that matter, are really seeking for justice for all these martyrs of the faith. And why is this happening? This is not happening just no, only because uh, certain people are angry of them. These are part and parcel of the modern day persecution, the way we look at it, of church people. Our church people who were very actively in, involved in serving the basic uh, sector of society within their area. And because of their activity, because of their deep in involvement with them, the military and police suspected, suspected them right away. And starting from that suspicion, it grew to that level that they should be executed. That is how I can picture uh, the way uh, these extrajudicial killings are happening. You see, there is a pattern. There is a pattern of doing it. So you cannot, uh, we cannot be mistaken of who mm -hmm. should we uh, put the blame uh, on, on these uh, cases of uh, extrajudicial killings, abductions, and even harassments on our church uh, and church people. Thank you for uh, the opportunity of uh, sharing, because I uh, I also believe that uh, we need to share this. We need to tell these stories. Not only that we can <coughs> receive help, but more so to share that uh, we are like uh, prophets nowadays, mm -hmm. who, by speaking about uh, the <coughs> will of God, and by proclaiming his, his, his will in a given context like ours, it would really be uh, confronted with such persecutive uh, uh, measures from the powers that be. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much.